A brutal murder is showing the dangers of criticizing religion in Bangladesh. A gang armed with machetes hacked to death secular writer Nazimuddin Samad. He is the sixth writer killed in the last 14 months. Police say the murder was pre-planned. Protesters taking to the streets afterwards demanding justice for Samad. The Home Minister of Bangladesh, Asad Uzaman Khan, says the government is doing its best to catch the criminals. But he also says so-called bloggers do not have any rights to use these kind of languages that attack religion. Khan adds that no one has a right to attack religious leaders, be it Prophet Muhammad, Guru Nanak, or Jesus. Now, the population of Bangladesh is almost 90% Muslim. When it became independent from Pakistan in 1971, leaders decided that the country should be secular. But in 1988, the country's military ruler declared Islam the state religion. Well, let's get more on this story with Ali Riaz. He is a professor at Illinois State University and an expert on South Asian politics and political Islam, joining us via Skype uh, from, uh, from Illinois. And uh, thanks for doing so, Professor. You know, freedom of speech is enshrined in the Constitution in Bangladesh. But when you have ministers saying what the Home Minister uh, said, it's not exactly a glowing endorsement of freedom of speech. Does freedom of speech really exist in Bangladesh? It is under severe threat, Michael. As a matter of fact, it is uh, under threat from two sources. One is this militant groups, the extremists that we have we have been familiar with over the last 14 months. You have mentioned that there, there has been six killings. But we are also witnessing this the democratic space uh, shrinking and freedom of expression are being stifled. The threat is from the government because, as you can see, instead of protecting these uh, bloggers, the government is taking steps which is providing justification to this kind of marches. On the other hand, we have also seen criticizing the government has become very dangerous nowadays. So, in so far as the freedom of expression is concerned and 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 the democratic space is concerned, it is shrinking uh, quite fast in Bangladesh, which is very unfortunate. That's not the reason Bangladesh became independent. It does help us understand though why we keep hearing about you know this kind of situation. Samad is a sixth secularist writer or publisher to be murdered. Uh, there in the last, what, 16 months or so. What is the environment that allows for these kinds of brutal planned murders to, to take place? You'll have to take a broader look at the situation. It is not only a, it is not an you know separate incident that is happening. There is a pattern to it. Of course, the, these are the hallmarks of the Islamist militant group. But also, if you look at the larger political scene over the past months, if you look at this, there has been demonstration. Uh, law and order situation is deteriorating fast. It has deteriorated to the extent that there has been a, a you know a cultural activist was killed. She was brutally murdered, and there uh, there has been no progress in terms of investigation. There has been demonstration against that. And we have seen there was a massive demonstration against a coal-fired uh, plant to be established in southern Bangladesh. Uh, police and other forces have taken uh, measures which is disproportionate. In many instances, what we are witnessing is this an environment where these kind of things are providing impunity to certain people. And mm -hmm. that is encouraging the militant groups to act like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I, I was going to say that you know, most of these victims, uh, I, I think it's fair to say, are not anti-Islam. They're anti-extremists. They're, you know, they're, they're against fundamentalism in, in, in their writings. And the, the, the government in action, as you outlined there, by not doing anything, they encourage those extremists to take revenge on the streets. So what is happening to pressure the government to change what it is doing? First and foremost, there need to be the democratic space need to be widened. What we have seen over the last years, that democratic space has shrunk. And when you are not allowed to speak, and that you cannot differentiate between speaking against religion and speaking against the government, it is very much important that the freedom of expression, the right be protected so that everyone can speak. So if you create a culture of fear, if you create an environment within impunity is provided to certain people, that encourages other people to act like this. And in many instances, you have to ask the timing about it, and you have to ask who would benefit out of this kind of situation. And that's why, as I have insisted, it needs to be looked into the broader 
within the broader political environment. And this broader political environment is not very democratic at this point. Yeah, and when you say that there's no justice, you know, I understand that even the, ju the judiciary system is filled with uh, Islamist sympathizers and there's a lot of corruption as well. Is that correct? Yes, but also what we see is the politicization in, in, at various levels of administration and how it is being at, uh, approached. If you look at uh, the, the overall political environment, and you cannot simply have one institution which would act you know, independently and uh, with, without any kind of uh, uh, restraint. But what we have seen that the institutions, uh, including the election commission and others, which are being so politicized in a manner and have been used for immediate political gains, that has cost the nation very dearly. And if it continues, whether it's judiciary, whether it's uh, administration, yeah. central element is that there has to be a democratic space everyone needs to have right. the right to speak right. and some of the things government may not like but they will have to accept it if they call themselves democratic they will have to accept it yeah and that kind of environment obviously breeding a lot of fear for those those bloggers as well yeah. as well I, I saw a quote in the new york times with one blogger saying you know everybody is waiting to see who's next you know that's that obviously speaks to that that deep fear ali riaz we're gonna have to leave it there we thank you so much for your time with illinois state university Thank you.